<laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. I've never seen a ferret close up. I bet they're incredible pets. Whoa! <laughs> Gosh, it's unbelievable they can fly <laughs> at that size. I wrote Animal because I I've been researching for my own like personal life about evolution and because I was really interested in pair bonding and how all animals have kind of this set way of breeding which has been honed over millennia which is the most successful way possible and it's all kind of influenced by environment but yet with human beings we were kind of dealing with it in, all in a very intellectual way it was all kind of choices and marriage and and I was really interested in the idea that some people don't believe in monogamy yet we have a culture that is so geared towards when you find this right person this one person and everything else will work out and I was in my early 30s and it hadn't happened for me I'd had I'd fallen madly in love with people but never to the point that it had lasted forever and I didn't like the fact that the language is all about like failed relationships and that kind of stuff. So I was researching for personal happiness. And then when I found out that there was lots of science kind of spread out in all of these books, most of it treating the reader as if they were male, they hadn't really talked about female desire in procreation. It was all kind of supplication. So then I realised basically that everything interrelated and I wanted to write a book that was absolutely accessible so that someone didn't have to trawl through all these books like I did. When I was researching for the book, some of the studies I found really interesting stated things that were so obvious, but you always think it's just us and it's new. Um, so the fact that they, was, they, were doing studies of, um, they were doing studies of women looking at women and um, the parts of our brain that light up under an MRI are where our eyes go. And basically, it just becomes clear that women look at women as much as men do. It's not a sexual kind of looking, but it is a sizing up and it is, does relate to our own confidence. There was a study where they got supermodels to look in the mirror for 15 minutes and then fill out questionnaires and their self-esteem plummeted, which is <laughs> heartening. <laughs> but this is something, unfortunately, oh, sorry, inbuilt into us rather than, oh, because we are not beautiful enough. The way that we look at each other is a social thing in terms of a tribe. And um, one of the things that actually made me feel a lot better about how sometimes I feel terrible, um, especially, and I think that's what I write about in the book, about being at a tube station and being greeted by all of these kind of moody looking, hairless, poreless, silky, divine goddesses, is that in a tribe, and they always say that probably a group of families would have been about 150 people, someone's doing a poo, um, 150 people in terms of our evolution, that in, if you were like a 25 year old woman in a tribe, you'd be in the top 2% of attractive, available women who weren't pregnant or lactating. And that now what we have is the exact opposite, where that the, around us everyone is a supermodel and it's and we feel like we're completely alone in being this disgusting kind of uh hairy smelly go into the toilet monster and so and so and, and actually that was one thing that i did feel really heartening like i'm not a crazy vain person for this affecting me i'm built to care what i look like because that's how we procreated in the first place uh, in terms of like body image, what I was getting irritated with is that my feelings about myself, my negative feelings about myself were actually affecting my life choices and it can be a form of oppression. And my job, stand up, means to stand up in front of everyone and talk to them, and which means that they're looking at you. And I, I do, you dress in a way that means you're, you don't think you look that nice because you're, my fear was always if I went out there, I wouldn't want them sitting there thinking, Oh God, does, why is she wearing a skirt? Does she think she's attractive? Do I need to shout at her <laughs> and tell her that she's not? And actually, in terms of heckles, people always ask me stand up about heckles, like, oh, what's your best put down? It happens so infrequently, and certainly no one, no one ever actually shouted out, you're fat and ugly. But I was always expecting it, especially at the beginning, and always dressed in like the most invisible way possible. So sometimes people do that in a kind of a uniform, whereas me, it was just that I wear black trousers and Converse trainers and a jumper. So here's a prime example. Today I don't have a gig. I'm going to a lecture, so I'm wearing tights and shoes and a dress, and I wouldn't wear this for a gig in case someone thought I thought I looked nice. Isn't that terrible? But then on TV, they make you put makeup on and they don't let you not wear makeup, and that's a whole other thing. Because on TV, if you're a woman, you have to be a pretty flower. Like, the boys can wear suits and the girls are there to be like, well, we have to have one now, so <laughs> at least look bright for us. Um, and you get angry because you think, I'm an intelligent woman. Why can't I just switch that off? I don't want to care about it. I know that that isn't what I'm offering to the human race. But it's a long going thing. With the book, lots of people ask me like, oh, so now you're sorted. And you're like, what? No, this is like, it was, wasn't a self-help book from someone who's worked out what to do. <laughs> like, I have no idea. So I think of myself as an animal, as a, as a, a palliative, as a, to, to soothe myself. I know I don't exist to be sexually attractive, but yet I was still on, a, on like a, 
a bad day, it wouldn't matter if I went through my achievements. I go, what does it matter? I've got so much cellulite. Like, who cares how many books I've read? And so part of understanding the animal side of it now makes me go, OK, there's this inbuilt thing that makes you occasionally have that bad day. And the other side of it is, and look how many books I've read. There is a follow-up book I'm researching at the moment, and so and I want to write about how we evolved to want to have power over other people, but also I want to talk about sex work and pornography a lot more. And um, I got one reader. <laughs> I know it's 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 very necessary in this day and age. Um, I want to write about all of that stuff, but again, I'm trying to keep it light-hearted. <laughs> Look at these guys! I'm going to miss you so much. <laughs> I'm going to miss you so much.